and welcome back to another episode of Valley Vision's Food and Ag webinar series. My name is Emma Kovit. I'm the project manager here at Valley Vision. This week, I'm excited to be speaking to Mary Kimball. She is the executive director for the Center for Land-Based Learning. The Center for Land-Based Learning is located in Winters, California, and for the last 25 years has been working to cultivate and inspire the next generation of farmers. In light of COVID-19, like many other nonprofits and organizations, Mary and the Center for Language Learning have had to pivot and hear about how not only they're changing programs, but how they are changing their perspective and looking for funding, how they're going to be changing their ideas about addressing workforce needs and workforce challenges, and hearing some amazing stories about what she's seeing on the front lines from her previous students who have gone on to open farms um, and how they are helping the community that they serve now. What's well, it's, uh, yeah, things are fine with the Center for Land-Based Learning. I mean, we've obviously uh, adjusted accordingly. Lots of folks are working mm -hmm. from home, um, but all, we still we still have a kind of a skeleton crew that comes into the office daily, including me, um, office manager, some of our, just like one or two other staff. And mm -hmm. then um, we've had to obviously, we've got some folks that are in the field, that are, you know, they're still in the field, they're fine. <laughs> so whether that's you know, if it's Sarah Bernal in West Sac Urban Farm or um, Matt Clement, who's working on our new headquarters facility doing landscaping and, you know, things like that, obviously they're, they're in the field. So, um, but the biggest shift has been with our programs because everything we do is all in person, right? Mm -hmm. So our high school programs, which we run around the state, uh, you know, every, pretty much almost every day of the school year, we have field days going on from Tehama County to Kern County and um, Central Coast, Sonoma. So there's, you know, programs going on in 28 counties around the state all throughout the year. Um, and those are all, of course, shut down. So we had to completely, because they go through May, we had to completely kind of reconfigure how to do it. And then um, also the beginning farmer training program, which is locally, uh, that also, of course, is all in normally in person. And those are normally three days a week on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays, um, with Tuesdays and Thursdays being like classroom. <laughs> Or, you know, or they come as a group and they're out in the field, right, working. And then on Saturdays, they do field trips to different farms. Well, so all of those are not happening. So everything's been shifted to online platform. Everything's been shifted to Zoom. So in the case of our California Farm Academy training program, the coordinator, the manager, um, Maureen, shifted everything to Zoom literally like day one. And it was very fast, you know, so they are all fine, though. They like it. And we have all of the people who would have been coming to do like the presentations like Mark Van Horn from UC Davis Student Farm, or he was, he's obviously retired now, but he's doing everything on Zoom. They've even done field walks with Zoom, said the students love it. <laughs> So, I mean, they don't love it, I'm sure, as much as if they were doing it in person, but they're really appreciative. I've in this very challenging time when everything else is different and or they can't do it, at least they can do this and they're still doing their homework and they're still turning in their assignments and they're still learning and they're feeling like they're on track. And then the, the Farms Leadership Program, which is our, one of our high school programs, so I shifted that, which you probably saw very quickly to, um, based on a recommendation and some ideas, based on what CFA was doing. I just, I just started talk, calling people, contacting people and said, hey, that are friends of mine from around the state and that are partners in our program anyway, and said, hey, would you be willing to do this on, um, you know, this completely different thing? And they, I have not gotten one no. So I'm already booked all the way through the middle of May. And I'm calling them, you know, coffee with the farmer. Um, and they are really fun. So we're, they're for our students. They're a webinar platform. And they're technically for our high school students or students who've graduated and they're in college and ag and environmental sciences. But they're, you know, we're putting them out to the public. Just, you know, our programs are all about workforce development. What are the jobs? 
And I think, you know, this, this is just helping not just right now kind of us get through this, but also these are going to be things that these are webinars that can be looked back at. Yeah. I mean, moving, it seems to be that this idea of moving into the digital space and making things more accessible online um, has really given you guys an opportunity to connect with others that you might have not been able to in your normal curriculum and in your normal programming. And it seems that, you know, it's kind of almost a silver lining. You know, you're yeah. integrating a lot of different backgrounds and, um, you know, professionals in this space and being able to connect and you know, expose your students to them. So how many students do you, um, in, are in your high school program currently that are participating in your, in the app program? Well, it, change, it changes daily, but um, this program, the way that we originally had planned to do it was just for our farms advanced students. And those are students who are in a second year program with us. So first year is called farms leadership, second year is called farms advanced. Farms leadership is kind of big intro, right? They come out to daily or daily. <laughs> now that's daily now. Um, monthly field days on farms, ranches, processing facilities, uh, research stations, right? It's a br big, broad, kind of big, broad brushstroke of what's going on in agriculture, natural resources in a particular region. And again, those are monthly in-person field days. So the next, the second year, and though we have uh, 16 cohorts around the state and each cohort is 30, approximately 30 students. So then year two, we take a subset, people can apply to come back and it's called Farms Advanced and they still do monthly field days in person, but the focus, there's a smaller group and the focus is much more so on jobs, workforce development, resume creation, networking, and doing more one-on-one -on -one with different, um, different companies than they, than they met year one. So that subset is about 80 throughout the state. And then we have each year, and then we have alumni that are in, again, that are in uh, colleges and universities, uh, community colleges, whatever it might be, studying ag and natural resources. And we help them as well connect to job shadows and paid internships in the industry. I love that it's going out. We're gonna be publicizing it in our newsletter. It's going out this awesome. week. I yeah. saw your schedule. You guys are weeks out with yeah. content development. <laughs> that is amazing. It's yeah. amazing to yeah. see that. Um, with, with this idea of, you know, really trying to cultivate the next generation of farmers and in this, in this current environment, what is, what is your thoughts and what are you thinking about in near term, long term, um, you know, really trying to advocate careers in ag when it seems like ag is kind of in this dim and grim kind of situation, you know, small farmers operate on such thin margins and who's going to be there at the end of this. I, actually, I always look at things, I guess, with a half, a half um, glass half full mm -hmm. <laughs> versus half empty. And I actually see, th see this time as being actually really exciting mm -hmm. for, for farmers um, and for food supply chain. Yeah, there's challenges, there's no doubt. I mean, whether you're small or large right now. I mean, I, one of my, like I said, my guest this morning was telling me that his contracts for tomato processing tomatoes were canceled last week. Like he said, that's never happened in his lifetime, okay? So whether you're small or large, this is tough. But what we do know is that we absolutely need farmers and we need people going into agriculture and environmental sciences. So that our farms program at the high school level, I wanna be clear, that is not to create new farmers, okay? Mm -hmm. Our California Farm Academy, which is for adults, that is to create farmers and farm managers. Our high school programs are really for the STEM jobs in ag and environmental sciences and all of the other things, logistics, mm -hmm. sales, you know, again, research, right? There's a lot of other kinds of jobs besides production. So our high school programs are really focused around that. Our California Farm Academy is focused on developing the next generation of farmers. So we have you know, we're trying to cover the bases, right? Mm -hmm. There's lots of different things we can be, that we need to be doing. So I think of right now of being one of the questions I ask almost everybody is, you know, what are some of the jobs you're seeing today that are most critical to whatever business company you have? And what are, your, what are you seeing needs for the future? And this is gonna change everything, right? 
COVID-19 is going to change everything. It is there will be a very new normal. And that will mean there will be a lot of different kinds of jobs in, in ag um, and in the supply chain and in the way that the supply chain works. So I actually, to me, these are these opportunities that I look at to say, yes, there's challenges. Yes, that we're going to be losing, I'm sure, farms and ranches as a, as a part of this, just like we're going to be losing a lot of small businesses. Agriculture is not immune uh, mm -hmm. to this. Um, but but they're on the other side, because of people's connection and like, oh my God, where's my food coming from? I mean, I know you've heard this and it's not anecdotal, it's real, which is that there are all these farms, your, your family farm including, which you know, hadn't been doing a CSA program or uh, had, had you know, really seen declining numbers in their CSA box subscriptions and now have either brought it back or are like hundreds of people, thousands of people, depending on the CSA, on waiting lists. So I don't know, I just see it's a shift, right? It just means it's a shift. It means we have to be really nimble and quick but it also means there's opportunities that maybe there weren't there before. So I always, I always think of these opportunities, these times as being like, what, okay, so how do we shift? How do we adjust quickly? And what are the opportunities for the future? Yeah, and I think that is something especially you see in the farming ag world is get to work. You know, yeah. no, there's no time. To, yeah, there's no I mean, time. To as, die. There's... as my guest said this morning, he's like, this is nothing all that different for egg. Like normally it's like the wet, some huge weather thing that's disrupted everything or some big insect infestation or whatever. Right. Like yeah. we deal with this all the time. This is different. But it's still for us, we are so used to a very fast adaptation. Mm -hmm. And yes, you're going to lose some companies and some businesses along the way. There's no doubt about that. Yeah. Um, but okay. it also means there's openings maybe for people who didn't think they had a role before or, you know, an idea that they had before wasn't quite cooked and, and actually it works out better now. So, you know, that's just, I think, the nature of agriculture is that it is so um we're so used to <laughs> disruptions <laughs> for, for, especially for farmers like you know it's always something there's always something happening this period of time has been really interesting especially from you know for me kind of reflecting back on what my family's doing with our farm yeah. a, a lot of farmers have and are working together and there has been this regeneration of people really wanting to connect with farmers in this time of I don't really want to go to the grocery store. Or I don't know where my food's coming from. People are going to farmer's markets still and pe farmers are working together to create systems in which they can continue to sell their products and continue to keep their business. And the other thing, amazing. Which, which is, um, which is awesome is, uh, people, the urban ag opportunities again, to me, this, this is going to cause, I think a real boom <laughs> in people wanting farms like in their neighborhood. Right. It kind of goes back to, you know, you've, you've been reading the stories about, you know, Victory Gardens kind of coming back and things like that. It's in that style of like, huh, where is my real food security? Right. And so whether it's gardening in your backyard or community gardens or it's urban farms like what we do in West Sacramento. Oh, my God. Like we all of those farmers in West Sacramento are doing very well right now. And I was going to mention, I was really lucky to take that tour of it last summer when you yeah. guys announced, you know, the headquarters being built and everything that was going on with your new yeah. truck. And immediately I start right before we had our, our conversation today, I was thinking about all those farms in West Now Africa. the truck, that. the truck, unfortunately, truck hasn't been built yet because all of the supplies for the truck, because it's a, you know, it's a custom built deal, um, are on hold. He can't get them. So well, we need it now more than ever. Yeah, I know. Well, that's the crazy thing is like now is when we really need it <laughs> and we can't get it. So it's come, it comes from a company in, in, um, in Canada. It's called the Farmer's Truck is the name of the company and you can look them up. They're awesome. Um, and he builds them, literally builds them, custom built. So unfortunately, his order, you know, everything's on hold the chassis, mm -hmm. the this, the that. So we originally were hoping to get it in May. 
don't know when we're going to get it. Yeah. But I think this is a great example of to why you guys need this and why our communities need more than one of these trucks. We need a fleet for to help with disaster situations where this comes in online, where food accessibility is may, is becoming, you know, a question. Like, I don't know where my food's going to come from. I don't, I can't get to the grocery store. Be yeah. able to access and deliver with people exactly. who food is. Well, and imagine, imagine if right now we did have this truck and, and people who are homebound, elderly, you know, seniors, whatever, families, everybody, right? You're able to literally pull up in a parking lot at their apartment complex or whatever, in a neighborhood park. We're not supposed to be going to parks, but whatever, right? You can yeah. pull up and people can come and buy food directly from the truck and you know you're using all the social distancing guidelines you're doing all of that and they wouldn't even have to go to their grocery store or whatever and put themselves at potentially more risk to be able to buy and because the goal for the truck is to not just have fresh produce and fruit but to also have staples like rice and beans and you know other things right not mm -hmm. everything of course but some of the staples so yeah, it's a bummer. Like at the time when you really, really need it, we don't have it. And it just makes you realize that we're not particularly resilient right now. Uh, and like I said, if there was a fleet of these, it would be awesome. So those are the kinds of things. I mean, we're honestly, we're putting in for some of these emergency funds, whether it's for the Sacramento, you know, community, um, Sacramento community, um, fund or the Yolo Community Fund or whatever, because it's like, uh, this is emergency response. Food, obviously, is the, ba the basis. So mm -hmm. if we can help, um, you know, provide more access to food from the farmers that we help support uh, in this region, then, then that's a big part of how we not just operate now, but how we want to operate in the future. Mm -hmm. Uh, could you share with us some stories about your inner city farmers and some of those urban farms and some of your students and what they're doing and what you've heard and from the yeah. front lines? Well, I think I'll, I'll, I'll stick with, uh, with West Sac for now. So we, um, you know, we have five farms in, in West Sacramento, uh, one of which is Fiery Ginger. They actually were able to transition kind of out of, we had, the, we had the lease with the school district. They were so successful that they were, with Washington Unified, they were able to take on the lease themselves, which is exactly what we want. But they're a good example of a story. So they had really been focused these last couple of years and had developed a huge market pretty much all of their product for schools, <laughs> right? For school lunches. So huge uh, greens, but specifically lettuce mixes. And all, almost all came to a halt, screeching halt when the schools closed. Now, there are schools, uh, SAC Unified and others, and you know, they're, still doing, they're still doing lunches, uh, but, but maybe not to the same levels as they were before. SAC Unified, probably is because they're doing an amazing job, but others aren't. So their sales all, for the most part, they're still selling to Natomas, but a lot of that is gone. So they literally had to shift and they had to say, what are we going to do with all of this lettuce? Like incredible lettuce, right? Uh, and they did a real quick pivot and they got word out and basically said, hey, we're going to do boxes. They haven't done boxes that's not what they've been doing. They also uh, were go to the Davis Farmer's Market and they created like a grab and go box program. So people rather than coming and like, you know, pawing over everything, right? Which is, I could see why people would be a little concerned about that. They set up a box that basically is just like a CSA box. It's already all prepped and ready to go. Now you just buy the box. It's just, mm -hmm. you get what you get, just like a regular CSA box. So they do those at the Farmer's Market as well. So they did the grab and go box at the farmer's market. They did the grab and go box for home delivery and they're changing their whole crop plan for the whole year. Like boom, everything changed. However, they, you know, the response from their, from their customers has been overwhelming. Um, and 
they're getting more customers because there's all these people that are on on lists on other CSAs and they're able to shift them over. So that's a really awesome story about one of our farms that um, has just done an incredible job. Another one is Three Sisters Gardens, also in West Sacramento. And that's Alfred Melbourne and, and his wife, Manuela. And they actually just became a 501c3 nonprofit organization uh, within the last six months. And they, uh, we'd been leasing to them at the Cummins Farm location and they were, they were sharing that site with another farm called We Grow Farm. And now we've given them another site, which is Fifth and C. Uh, so they have two sites in West Sac. And unfortunately, again, they're really focused on education and getting youth out and especially really ensuring, trying to make sure that kids uh, don't go down the wrong path and, and don't go towards uh, in incarceration and get them engaged and involved early on. And so they haven't been able to do much of that, right? Because of, of all of, of the, you know, we have to be very, very careful. So we can't get groups out and doing group volunteer days or whatever. But they, they do have small numbers of folks come and volunteer, including youth right now, that are helping out at the farm. And they're completely developing the new Fifth and Sea site. And it looks absolutely gorgeous. And they're going to be up and running and they're planting now for, for summer. So they're completely on target for all of the things that they had planned to do this year with from the production side. It's just that they can't do the youth education and outreach part right now. Um, but I'm sure they will be up and going again as soon as we can be. Um, so, so those are two really great stories on the, on the farmer side. Um, and on the youth side, I'll, I'll share a story also from Sacramento. So we, we have 15 interns, paid interns, through the Thousand Strong program in Sacramento. And those are interns uh, at School Gardens, uh, at Luther Burbank, so the Burbank Urban Garden Program, uh, GEO, G Grant Environmental Organization, which is at Grant High School, and Sacramento High School. And so those students actually started their internship with us last May. It's a year-long program. So we, part of that program is, of course, they get paid for work that they do uh, at their school gardens. But they also, we are supposed to give them, provide them training uh, and 40 hours over the course of the year. Well, they've done 20 already, and we had planned to start the next ramp of training in February and complete in March. Well, they're not at their schools. Mm -hmm. We can't do the training in, per in, in, uh, you know, in person. And this is really workforce development training. Again, it's the 21st century skills, um, building resumes, that kind of thing. So again, pivot, and so most, these, all of these students, all 15, are low-income students. Many of them do not have access to computers at home. If they, they have a smartphone, that's usually it. So we've provided them all with tablets, uh, and we were able to receive funding um, from the Sacramento Bee Book of Dreams for part of that, and we also are utilizing tablets that we had from a previous um, a previous grant from Wells Fargo that, and we're giving all of them, all 15 of them tablets, not just to use right now for this training that we're doing all online on Zoom, but also they get to keep them. As, soon, as, as long as they complete the training, which they, they're well on target, they get to keep them, which means that they will be able to go, um, most of them are seniors, into you know high college next year whatever it is uh, that and outfitted with something to utilize so they're literally on Friday we we debuted some some training for them and and in financial literacy um, we worked with Umqua Bank we had one of our professionals that we as a partner with us he got on and they did Zoom with the banker so they did they'd done previous to that they did sessions. Um, from the Khan Academy and KHAN Khan Academy. It's, it's a platform already there. They were able to utilize it and get, and get kind of a lot of the background. And then they spent an hour with, uh, with Petter Bruce from Umqua Bank. It was supposed to be half an hour and they were so excited and had so many questions that it went for an hour. So that's just another example of the way that we've had to quickly change 
um, utilize different resources in order to make sure that these students that in this case high school students are served uh, by the programs and that they're, then their families are also served and their communities because then they are better able to complete high school, uh, go on to their next levels of education, um, feel confident in that, they can get jobs, you know, because they've had a great experience with us uh, and they've, they've really built their resumes. So that's another example of, of a program that um, people probably don't know that we run, but yeah. <laughs> Another well, it's, it's 15, yeah. <laughs> it's great to have you talk about it, and it's amazing this multi layered approach you guys are taking to connect with the community and make sure that everyone is, you know, supported. You have a lot of programs, you have a lot of work, you guys have a farm to take care of on top of everything else, and a headquarters to open and, yeah. to take care of, <laughs> and farms to watch out for. So, this, this has been a really great conversation, and I'm really excited to see what you guys do. Just on a completely, you know, thinking about how things are going to kind of come out in ways into helping people just off the top of my head. I was thinking about, uh, I don't know if you remember this, but Farmville, like way back, like in 2008, yeah. thinking about like new programming. I was just, how cool would it be to have someone help design a program where it's somewhat like that, but follows like a scientific algorithm in which students can continue to like, mm -hmm. but you know, have to input accurate farming information to like make, something work. I don't know. Just yeah. younger generation of making things interesting, especially if you're doing something online. Farming is, from experience, not something you can learn on a computer <laughs> or in a book. Um, it's yeah. sticky. It's in the dirt um, 100%. So it, you, finding innovative and new ways to ha you know, connect students and connect those who are interested to agriculture and farming and, and what is being grown is, is really critical. And, yeah. you know, if we can't go onto a farm and physically learn how to put an irrigation pipe or learn how to correctly, you know, cover crop or rototill or use a tractor. Like, how are we going to start, you know, continue training? Should this happen in the future? Should this happen, you know, with a student that might not be in a rural area that wants to learn about farming and learn about agriculture, how are you going to teach them? Um, I think that there's a lot of opportunity in this and as, as much of a challenge as it is, there is, a lot of ingenuity and a lot of you know in the out of this and i think things like the coffee with a farmer is an amazing um opportunity and interesting exciting new way to continue getting the word out and talking about the importance of farming yeah well but, hopefully people learn something like i am learning something new every day from our farmers and realizing how my, how complicated everything is right it's, so it's, it's been exciting. I've been working quite a bit with my mom to try to tee up and organize and figure out how to use Instagram as a way to connect with farmers, as a way to, you know, congregate everyone and create a system. And, and they, she's managed to work up a CSA program, like you said. Mm -hmm. we, used, we used to have one a long time ago, but, you know, for any farmer driving around to CSA drop-off spots and continuing your farm work when it's just you and your partner or your spouse kind of managing your farm, it got to be too much of a challenge. But within 10 days, she's managed to find the person who launched her website, relaunch it, connect with farmers, create drop-off locations, you know, and yeah. farmers, farmers are resilient. They're, they don't sit down and cry and, you know, for <laughs> me, the world's sky falling. Like, no, we've got eggs to sell. We've got things to pull out of the ground and, and yeah. farmers are going to fight for, for their businesses. So mm -hmm, it's good absolutely. to see everyone coming together. Yep, definitely. I, I, I think it's been, like I said, I, there's been a lot of things that I have been watching and listening to that I've just been very excited about a different kind of conversation <laughs> about agriculture than we normally hear. Lots of complaining normally about how someone's doing something they think is wrong. Um, yeah, and that, I'm not hearing that right now. <laughs> I'm just hearing a lot of, you know, hearing a lot more gratitude and openness and to understanding versus the constant, um, you know, our food system is broken, right? How many times do we hear normally hear that? And I'm not saying that there isn't places where it is broken uh, and there's lots of work to do yet, but 
right now is an interesting time to say, really? Is it broken? How broke? You know, you're, th this, is a, this is an interesting time where we may be very different than other parts of the world right now as a result of a, a pretty incredible system. Yes, there's, there's challenges. There's always will be challenges. Not everybody who needs the food is getting the food. And that's consistent with long time challenges in this country. Yeah. Um, it's and those definitely are, exemplifying the issues that needed to be highlighted originally, yeah. which was food access, food insecurity, um, yeah. you know, who's getting food, who's, who can get it consistently, who can afford, who can afford you know, some, some of the things. It's really, well, I did want to ask you, is there anything you would like partners, system partners, community members to know, or anything you're doing that you need support on or the center's working on that, you know, we can get involved in and we can help right. support you guys better? I would just ask that foundations, funders, individual givers, think about the fact that all of these nonprofits are all, you know, v doing work to support communities. And it may not be those first responders, or it may not, like I said, it's not, it's maybe not be the people who are literally helping to, to deliver food to folks who are, and they deserve all of the funding that people want to give. But so do all of these other organizations that have been working to support communities day in and day out. And like in our case, I think food, I don't know, kind of important, right? Ha being able to have that mobile market truck to be able to get out this summer and any kinds of times in the future when we, when we have these situations and just a normal daily life is really important. I would, my, my request is just that let's not forget about all of the other organizations that are doing great work to support other people. Like in our case, we're supporting high school students whose families I'm sure are completely disrupted. And the fact that those high school students still have something to look forward to every day, many of these high school students still don't even have curriculum up yet. They're, they don't, they're not getting any kind of classroom curriculum. How far behind are they getting, right? But yet organizations like ours and others are still committed to helping those students right now. I'll let you go. Thank you again. I appreciate okay, it. Thanks, Good luck. I appreciate it. Okay. Bye.